Welcome back savages to another video. In today's video we have got a head-to-head -head battle. On the right hand side we have got a Uficam 2 Pro connected to a Uficam solar panel, the official solar panel that you get. This is a 2.6 watt solar panel and that will be going up against another Uficam 2 Pro here on the left but this is going to be connected to just a generic flexible solar panel and this one here is 5 watts. Now what it is in terms of price difference, the one on the right was about 40 to 50 pounds. The one on the left was just under nine pounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to take them both outside. We're going to connect them up. We're going to note the battery percentage of both of these cameras. And then we're going to just see how they do outside on a general overcast day just to see how they perform. Now, obviously, that's five watts. It's a bigger panel. It should do better than this. But the point of this video is, should you really be spending 50 pounds on one of these Uficam cameras when you can get one of these waterproof flexi ones for under £10. Let's go and find out. So there we go. Both outside. That camera's charging. And so is the other one. So there we go. Got both cameras outside. Both pointing in the same direction. This guy's looking kind of overcast. Let's see how they do. Just one thing I want to point out about the flexible panel, it's actually got an LED light on the back of it so you can always tell when it's charging, so that's a nice little touch. Whereas the standard UV one, nothing. Okay, and we are back. So both cameras have been outside charging for five hours and the results are in. So on the left we've got the UV solar panel itself and then on the right we've got the flexi panel. So we started off at 9% charge left on the one on the left and there was 40% left on this one on the right. So on the first hour, got absolutely no additional charge on the UV solar panel itself, but on the flexi one it gained 1%. So after two hours, again, there was no additional um, increase for the official solar panel from UV cam, but on the flexi one we got another percent out of that one. After three hours, then it started kicking in and we got an extra percent out of the UV one. Again, the flexi one went on again, got another percent out of that one. Four hours, again, both went up a percent each. But then after five hours, it started to get a lot more overcast and slightly darker. And both cameras basically stopped charging. So overall, the results were uh, starting off at 9%. After five hours, it was 11% charge for the official UV solar panel with just a 2% gain. With the flexi panel, that started off at 40%, went up to 44% after five hours, and that got a 4% increase. So obviously that's a slightly more powerful panel, but all things considered, if you're looking to get um, a solar panel to charge your UFI cameras, this one's 50 pounds, that cost me nine pounds. So, so effectively this one is five times more expensive than this flexible one. Uh, the only thing you're gonna have to bear in mind is obviously, with a UFI camera, you've got quite a secure connection with the rubber stopper inside to stop any water getting in. With the flexi panel, there may be, if you look closely, there might be a little gap just around the USB just on here. So what you could do is just get a glue gun and seal that. But if you have one of these sleeves just over the top, it goes quite a good way of protecting this as well. So you don't need that. On the other side, again, where the USB port goes into this flexible camera here, again, you can see there's a bit of a gap where you can see the USB um, header port go into it so again you could just put some kind of a glue gun around there to give it a full permanent seal so that's what I intend to do I mean why would you pay five times more for something that charges half as less for, and it's five times more expensive it just doesn't make any sense so what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description to this solar panel it's a flexible one it's got four holes in there so it's really easy to mount you just need any other USB to USB mini cable on the other end just use a glue gun to basically fill the gaps on this side and that side and you're good to go so anyway i hope you like this comparison video and please subscribe like if you have any questions please leave them in the uh, comment section below and i'll do my best to answer them but i just wanted to give you a good uh, experiment based on cost as to what would be the most effective way to keep ufi cameras fully charged the other thing to bear in mind is because it's such a slow gradual charge these aren't really meant to be used for charging these cameras from completely being flat that would take a long time what they're really made for is to kind of top up your charge during the day so they always hover around sort of 99 to 100 percent so what i would do is always make sure that these are fully charged your cameras 
uh, when they're mounted and then connect it and then these will just nicely just top these up during the day and you should be continuously topped up. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Please subscribe, like, and I'll see you savages on the next one.